Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us now pray together Psalm 29, verses 1 through 11. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, All are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he 
will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This Sunday, we gather on the baptism of our Lord, and we read scripture and we pray, and then we ponder how to understand the, the events of the world around us. And this week is, is challenging. We're in the middle of a surge with the pandemic. There's a vaccination coming, but there's also a more virulent strain of infection with COVID-19. We're in this betwixt and between place where we know that the vaccine is coming. We, we, we sense that life will somehow get more normal. It'll be different, but more, more normal. We can gather again someday, somehow. And I imagine that some of us will get very impatient in this time while we wait for all of us to become vaccinated and, and immune to this pandemic. So it's a difficult time. In our, in our public life and in our family lives and in our personal lives. Many of us feel isolated and feel separate from friends and, and customs and rituals that we enjoy here at church, at home, and other places. And then this week we've seen the protests in Washington, D.C., and how scary those can be, uh, the, the ransacking of the Capitol building, the occupation of the, of the offices, very scary. Uh, for those who agree with the people politically who did it or disagree, it's just unsettling. And so we're in an unsettled time. And we come to church through our computer, which is strange, and we seek God's wisdom. And we read about the story in the early chapters of Mark about the baptism of Jesus from John. Now remember, John is Jesus' older cousin. They're in the same birth year, just six months apart. And Richard Rohr sees the, uh, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, as someone who helped Jesus sort of grow to be a man and grow up. We all have maybe, if you're lucky, you have an older cousin that you grew up with. I did. I loved it. Someone who teaches us how to be human. Someone who's a bit older than us. Think about maybe there's a person like that in your life who played that role for you. That's the role John plays for Jesus. For his disciples, John was someone who called people into repentance. And repentance at its most basic means simply to turn around, to change course, to reorient towards God. It's actually the idea is that we're, we're called to face God, and then in life we sort of wander, and we get a little lost, and then so we repent, we turn back around towards God. And then we wander again, and we get a little lost, and we repent, we turn towards God. This is a natural part of life, and this was what John was calling people into when he baptized them. John makes it clear to us that Jesus baptizes us into something different. Jesus baptizes us into the fullness of life. The fullness of life. John baptized Jesus into a life of turning back towards God. Jesus baptizes us into the fullness so that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. That aspect of God that's closer to us than we are to ourselves. The Holy Spirit, God's, God's own presence in our hearts, helping our hearts beat and drawing us home at all times. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is a profound experience 
that anyone who has been baptized has experienced. And now we spend our lives making sense of it. When we think of the Holy Spirit, Jesus helps us see that that we prepare to meet the Holy Spirit, that there's a time of preparation, a time of getting ready. And part of that time is what he would call, the Greeks called kenosis, self-emptying. We empty ourselves so that we can make room for God. So I, I think in some ways as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus today, when he did that, we are called to do it also. And when we look at the baptism of Jesus, we see that he went into the water, which is like he died, and he came back out and he heard the dove, the Holy Spirit, say, this is my son, my beloved. I'm, I'm well pleased with Jesus. That's what he heard God say. So baptism helps us claim that God loves us and to experience that. And whatever we do in life when we see that and reclaim that for ourselves, we're being baptized again in the Holy Spirit. So think about how God loves you. Count your blessings. Count the way God's love comes to you. Go to those places. Seek that. And Jesus teaches us that it often comes when we empty ourselves. When we empty ourselves. It's called kenosis. Self-emptying. That's what Jesus did. Right after his baptism, he went into the wilderness and he was tempted in powerful ways. Imagine that the, the Holy Spirit comes to us right after we're tempted. Right after we struggle with with those aspects of our lives that want to take us away from God. The Holy Spirit comes to you in your life, in your everyday life. The Holy Spirit comes to you now and waits for your heart to open again. We often close our hearts in fear. So part of the call today is to live with courage, to acknowledge our fear for our national life, for our health, for our loneliness and and sort of kind of quiet. uh, A lot of people are sort of quietly depressed right now and a little dull and down in the doldrums. We acknowledge that, that we, we have those places in our own hearts. We acknowledge our fear, but we don't let it close our hearts. There's a, a, a spiritually courageous call to keep our hearts open. Like Jesus opened his heart at baptism did in the desert right after he was baptized, when he was tempted, on the way to the cross, when he was waiting in the Garden of Gethsemane, he knew he would be arrested. He asked the disciples to stay awake with him. He opened his heart even though he was afraid. And so as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ today, we recommit our own lives to living courageously, to loving courageously, to not going back into our corner and protecting ourselves, but but coming out. It doesn't mean be stupid. Don't, you know, don't be risky. But dare to love. Be courageous to love. And to love those who are different from you. This is a time to practice our own faith in our hearts quietly and to prepare ourselves for a more active ministry in the months to come. And so we do that. And I commend you to to live without fear, to live with courage, and that to claim that God is calling you into that place. I make that recommitment myself, and I do it with you here in the context of All Saints. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, form four found in your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he has loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide us in the process of discerning a new rector for our parish. Give us wisdom and courage to find a caring pastor for our people, to serve you and a world in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember those who have asked for our prayers. Since this service has been recorded, the current list of names is found at the end of your bulletin. These people are also prayed for daily by name through our observance of the daily offices of morning and evening prayer and by the daughters of the King. We pray for all those impacted by COVID-19, and especially the medical care workers who are putting their lives at risk to protect us. We pray for all the men and women in the uniformed and armed services and their families. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Luke's on the mountain in Phoenix. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. We also pray for Navajo land 
and our new companion diocese of Western Mexico, along with our companion parish and school, St. Paul's in Haiti. For All Saints Episcopal Day School, our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff, for all who are visiting us today, may they find our community a place of welcome and spiritual nourishment. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now let us say together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now we collect all our prayers together in the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.